Thanks so much for sticking around. It is now time to talk about uh, some headlines, some recent headlines. And as always, Eddie V here to talk with me about um, just some things that I've come across that I go, okay. this is kind of unbelievable, but no, this is real. This is quite real, and these are actual headlines. And so let me just start by asking you this. Now, you know, I know where you work, and I know that there's not an elevator where you work, but do you ride right. elevators on a regular basis? Yes. Okay. Whenever I have to go more than one floor. Oh, <laughs> then you. I use you, elevators. Okay, then you would be one of those people, according to this recent study that's out, that elevator riders loathe. Okay, so recent okay. study, um, a survey conducted among about 4,000 full-time U.S. employees, right? And the question was this. You mean the America has 4,000 full, full-time employees? This, there you go. You awesome. wouldn't believe it looking the, at the, the headlines. The economy's picking up. All but right. it, it, we're on our way. And, and, and so the question was, what annoys you most in elevator riding, right? When you're riding on the okay. elevator, okay? Right. And so I just want to throw some of these out to you. And I, and because because the things that people said that annoyed them, some of them I have never witnessed. Oh. And so these things were bizarre to me. Okay, so here you go. Okay. Flossing teeth. While no. People that, flossing that, their teeth. That goes beyond annoyance. Okay. That's disgusting. Changing a diaper, a baby's diaper while in the elevator. I want to know. flossing? To what? <laughs> oh, wow. I want to know what floor these that people go see. into. You know yeah. what I mean? Where are you going that you have time to do all this? Yeah. And then here, this one, showing someone a rash and then asking for a diagnosis. A total stranger? <laughs> Ed, I don't know, but I read these and I go, this cannot really be happening. And But here, can you guess the number one? So there was kind of like a, what's the most annoying thing? Uh, more that, annoying than those things. More annoying than those things. Can you can you guess what number no, one and was? I'm just and I'm just trying Throw to. It out. I'm still with the rash thing. Uh, this is a, a rash on a hand or something, right? Or well, a I, rash on know, my neck. This this is. Well, people, I don't know because if it were if it were something that is just you know you could do that outside of an elevator, but I don't know why you wait to an elevator. You feel like the person can't run. Right. I don't know what it is. And All I don't right, what's know, the, what's you know. the worst? What's the most well, annoying? You, what do you think it would be? When you look at this, and then you've got, let me include some of the other things that annoy people. Uh, squeezing into an elevator once it's already crowded. Not holding the door when you see someone Somebody. running towards, yes. okay? Uh, not stepping off the elevator to let someone else on. All of these I found really annoying, but can you guess number one? When I say it, you're going to know it. I can't guess. Talking on your cell phone. Well, that you know that gets to be annoying just about anywhere. I was really surprised though. I, I thought that's that's more annoying than someone flossing their teeth. Changing a baby's diaper, talking on your cell phone is the most annoying thing that but, people but do. But that's probably I'm guessing that that the number of people who floss or ask for a diagnosis of a rash <laughs> is probably a very small number, but probably everybody has been on an elevator yeah. where somebody is talking, and you and, and they don't just talk on their cell phone, they talk loudly. Well, because we, most people think that a cell phone is like a walkie-talkie, and you've right. got to yell into it. They Which don't my know wife that... accuses me when I call my dad, who is in Florida, on the phone, I always talk louder because he's long distance. <laughs> <laughs> Not because he's Italian. No, no, not no, because, no, well, not that, because maybe he's that Italian. Too. Maybe good, yeah. So anyway, that's it. Number one, talking on your cell phone. More annoying than even, and people reported that someone getting in and facing the wrong way is annoying, but not more annoying than talking on. Have you ever I, done that? Uh, have I ever done it? No. Face the wrong way in an elevator? No. Instead it's of just, facing just the doors? One door. <laughs> yeah, but you turn the other way. It freaks people out. Yeah, I, I, I read that. a list. It went around the internet several years ago about weird things to do on elevators. Yeah. And that was one of them. Uh, or it was it was to try to freak people out, right? Uh, or t to just suddenly say, "Stop talking to my head," or so, <laughs> you know, or, or those, or just really weird things that nobody would uh, do if, in their right minds. Well, apparently, according to four thousand U.S. employees, people are doing this, and it's really driving them nuts. Okay, you ready for this? All right. Six-year-old kid goes into uh, the doctor's office after several years of having a hard time breathing and sleeping at night, and they thought he had all kinds of uh, sinus issues, allergies you know, and, allergies yeah. and all of that. Turns out, for the past three years, he's had a Lego piece stuck up the shaft of his nose. When he was three years old, he stuck it in his nose, and apparently, did, did Dad he, didn't know. Did he not start talking differently? I mean, if you if you start talking like this and have pressure in your nose. They, they thought maybe it was allergies. They thought a sinus infection. Dad felt horrible. Dad's, and here's the deal though. He'd gone to several doctors and they couldn't find it. They didn't, they, they just they thought didn't, he They had, didn't, uh, the, they always do the little thing where they look in your ears and Because it's, it's a kid and it's yeah. a little boy and you expect him to have 
you know, something stuck up his nose if he's got, you know. Every every parent has how many how many kids do you have? You three. Have three. Every every parent has stories of kids, their own kids, who have stuck various things up their nose. Well, my son stuck a, a whole ravioli up his nose once. Wait a minute. <laughs> Whole ravioli. Now that's got to be an Olympic sport. How we do didn't you know for fit, weeks. How do you fit a ravioli? It's kind of swelled. Up your no, nose. no, no, he didn't. It wasn't a ravioli. No, it was. Uh, but, okay. he, but he's a part Italian. I would have been proud if he had <laughs> ravioli. <laughs> Carrying the, yeah, 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 you got that thing. Yeah, yeah, hey, that's, the that's, same there. that's my boy. A sausage yeah. in the other. You got, you got lunch tomorrow. See. <laughs> No, that's, you know, that's gross. I shouldn't this have said is, that. No, but this is what kids do. And so here, the dad, apparently the dad is the primary caregiver um, because he's this the one who's quoted here. This didn't end in a lawsuit, did it? No, it didn't. And okay. the dad said he felt so bad. you know. And so according to this little boy who is now six, he did this when he was three. And For he remembered three it. three years? Three years going to bed, having problems breathing, and going to various doctors until finally one doctor said, we think there is something stuck deep up your nose shaft. And what they found was a little wheel-shaped Lego uh, encased in a that fungus. Could've, that could, yeah. Oh, that's Isn't that horrible? A, yeah, drink it's up. It's real, mm. but, this is, <laughs> but this is real. I can't believe it. And the kid went. not didn't go into his sinus cavity or something. Really is a blessing that it didn't move along or cause him to like not be able to breathe, seriously not oh, be able to breathe in the yeah. middle of the night. You know, dad said he felt bad. Little boy when asked if he remembered sticking something. Not as bad as his son did. Right, he said, I remember sticking spaghetti up there, but not the, not the <laughs> pinwheel. Anyway, okay. here you go. You ready for this? <laughs> Tell me what comes to mind. This really blew my mind, Ed. Tell me what comes to your mind when I say uh, the term kingpin. Kingpin. Yeah. Uh, what do you think? A, a drug lord or a mafia boss. Do you think a high school student? A kingpin? A kingpin. No. Okay, so here's a story out of Ohio. This really blew my mind, and I, I really want to get your opinion on this. Uh, apparently, a 16-year-old uh, Ohio kid from suburban... Ohio, okay, parents well-to-do, was arrested. He was a drug kingpin in his neighborhood and across three different schools, just kind of distributing and had people beneath him distributing drugs to the tune of um, like $3,500 a month, right, that he's wow. bringing in. And when they arrested him, at the time he had $6,000 cash. That's half as much as I make but a, see, there you a go. month. <laughs> There you go, Ed. Right? He's just in high school. I'm not, I'm not trying, and he's in high school, and I'm not trying to, you know, suggest any alternate, you know, right. income or anything like that. But here's the deal, and this is this is my question: Is it believable that the parents didn't know? Well, I don't know. It, it 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 would depend on how smart the kid was and how stupid the parents were. Well, if they're well-to-do, maybe he already has a lot of stuff, you know, and so what's a few more things? You know, if yeah. he's got a lot, if he's got a really big allowance and he's got all the music and all the movies and all the games he wants and the parents don't bother him, they may, may never check to see. When he was arrested, there was $6,000 cash in his bedroom. Yeah. So my so he's question a saver. is... He's a he's saver, a, not a spender. Well, should the parents have known, Ed? Is, and, you know, we, we always, we don't want to accuse the parents. We want it because we're parents, so we understand, you know... Can you have a kingpin? And this is what authorities are calling him, a kingpin. So that well, means he wasn't just yeah. peddling obviously drugs. Obviously, the parents, uh, you know, don't have, you know, the 16 years old is, that's getting to the age where you're, maybe you're letting your kid start to, you know, make decisions on his own. Yeah. So you're not necessarily uh, uh, asking every time he's on the phone, who's that, who's that, who you're talking yeah. to. But that, you know, if, if he's away from home, you know, one of the, one of the biggest changes to American life that ever uh, occurred, occurred with... Uh, automobiles becoming commonplace for families and more than one where kids can take off and do their business outside the uh, outside the home. So apparently too much freedom this kid had. Well, Ed, not, I mean, these headlines you know weren't all needed. hilarious, right? That kid needed right? a good Lego up his nose. He needed <laughs> discipline this kid. <laughs> Parents, you remember that. There you go. You start having problems with your kids. Just use Lego. the Legos. Legos are your friends. Thanks so much, right. Ed. Ooh, it's time for me to tell you what's got me all pinned up this week. We are talking fashion. You know, I peruse Pinterest and there are a lot of things that I repin here and there. Fashion is one of those things. And so I thought, wouldn't it be great to have some fashion experts in studio with me this week to talk about what the trends are going to be as we head into the change of season. We're talking about fall 
fashion. So I've got a couple buyers from Reeds of Tupelo in studio to talk about just that. So I've got Dale Simmons and Krista Blanchard who are buyers for Reeds. And you guys are going to kind of walk us through what we can expect to see as far as fashion goes this fall. Dale, how about we start with you? That's great. And, and let's start with, with this gal right here. Okay. Like, what is she doing? All right, Mickey. This gal is wearing Eileen Fisher. She um, has on a wonderful mustard colored jeans. Okay, is that one of the colors thing. that we're looking at for mustard the fall? Mustard is. Mustard. You're okay. wearing it. Oh, I'm so happy You're to hear you say I was nervous, <laughs> Dale. I thought I wouldn't look right. You guys are fashion experts. No. Okay, good. Uh, what we're doing here is we're um, showing all the colors in this wonderful sort of a um, boho chic uh, yes. scar. Okay, which good. Which you can wear as a shawl or whatever. We are layering it also with a wonderful cardigan, long cardigan. I like that this is modest, Dale. I like that she's got she's got a nice button shirt right. here, and she's got her her cami under there. Now, okay, now I'm drawing my attention to the footwear here, Dale, because you, as well as this gal here, you right. guys are doing the animal print. Right. Is that something we can expect this fall? Very much so, and okay. it's all over the fashion. Okay, um, and you can you can pair it up with anything. Like you don't have to be all in animal print. Oh, you no. can just kind of. Make a statement. Just put with it, it out there. Yeah, okay, I like it. Now let's talk about this one over here. What's going on with I her? do want to tell you this. Oh, yes. This shoe happens to be a uh, called a smoker's, a smoking shoe, like the old gentleman used to wear. Oh, is that what that is? Yes. Okay, so is this a fashion that we're going to see taking off You're going to see this, this in a lot of different styles and colors. So now, that's a very it's important shoe. Is it different from a flat? Is exactly. it the shape of it is a little bit exactly. different? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this outfit is another Eileen Fisher look. I happened to bring this because we wanted to show these colors today. Yes. The cobalt blues, the mustards, and how versatile they are with everything. So it too has a silk layering piece underneath. Um, paired back with a, a wonderful, just a, a, it's a crepe, washable crepe, straight leg. Very pant. straight leg. Mm -hmm. I like that. Very These are classic. Vince Camuto boots that Love she's those. wanting to wear today um, mixed back with this gorgeous scarf which has all the colors that we think are important for fall. Okay so now here's what I like because we know that when we were in the spring and in the summer color was all the way. We had color blocking and then we had like almost kind of these neon splashes of color. Right. So we're not going to put that aside as we head into fall. We're going to keep that going Exactly. Exactly. Ooh, They're all important. That. Okay Krista what did you have today? Let's talk about your girls. Okay so I've got this gorgeous this really classy classic looking Trina Turk animal print dress mm -hmm. it's it's going back to all about the waistline yes. for fall we've been seeing the more fuller dresses yeah. and tops what's well, going back to more of the waist okay this one is a great example of that it, it kind of really pulls shows in off. Here. it's very it, forgiving it exactly gives a great waistline. it does another thing that I would like to tell you is that hem lines are gonna be all over the way I mean it's different hem lines with this dress, you can't really tell on this mannequin, but mid-knee, below the knee, those hemlines are coming back. Oh, you'll good. see a lot more of that, so you'll be, you know, have a lot easier. Um, Finding dresses that are flattering, that you feel comfortable in. Right, like, like for church that. and Let's to work. Let's talk about this statement piece, because this is a huge pop of orange. I love, this says fall. I love that. It does. It is definitely a statement piece, and it is the J. Crew. This one is kind of a... J. Crew is the one that came out with this, I believe. Um, but they're all over the market. You'll see them everywhere. This is a bubble uh, bib necklace. You'll see them in great colors. But like you say, your statement piece that you can just throw on with even a t-shirt and jeans and it'll just look Now, Krista, is great. she going to wear this with this handbag? Is this, does this go with this outfit here? Yes. I like this. I brought this hobo little clutch. Mm -hmm. I love this. Back with this. And then I brought the little... Um, I would say 50s inspired little vintage Vince Camuto oh, let me pumps. See that, I love Krista. those. Oh, I love With the little that. bow detail. So cute. I love the heel on this too. too. It's a wide heel. Mm -hmm. Okay, what about this gal over here? What's she got going on? Okay, she is a prime example of everything that's going on this fall. <laughs> Perforated leather. This BCBG jacket is really a huge trend for fall. Perforated leather is yes. what you call it. Wow, okay, okay. Uh, you'll see this in your accessories as well, like in your purses. Um, we have paired it back with a pair of seven for all mankind, floral, skinny jeans that have all the great colors like the pumpkins, the mustards, yes. the burgundies. Burgundies is going to be a huge color for fall. It's going to kind of almost take the place of black in some really? aspects. Really? Yes. And we have... Um, just really accented this outfit with the mustard accessories 
the bobble necklace, the hobo crossbody. Crossbody purses is another piece that is just great because no more of the hurting shoulders. You now yeah, have the crossbodies that, that are very. Um, and she's got the J. Crew necklace here going on as the other mannequin. Or is this is this a J. Crew design? This necklace. Well, here? it's not. I'm no. just saying that J. Crew kind of is the one that came out with this necklace and now it's all over the market. Okay, so there are other designers that are... All designers. Are, gotcha. And there, I'm sure there's another designer that came up with it. Um, Please, and then, can we show, we show this shoe? Yes. Because I, I love this shoe, Krista. Okay, I do here we also. go. These are Salm Edelman wedges. They're suede, mustard. Uh, the color's great. The wedges, I mean... You can always, you know, wedges, you feel like you're dressed up, yes. but yet you're not it gives unbalanced. You the height and without like the fear of falling, which exactly. I love. And then this, so we can still do this kind of open toe even in the fall. Yes. With this, this is not, we're not going to look like we're going summer shopping. We're ready for fall. Right. This. this is suede. Yes. You will be definitely safe with this shoe. I love it. Let's go talk some accessories because there are things that you can put on an outfit that's really going to change it around. And you've brought some other pieces here with you today. So let's talk about what's here. Tell me about this shoe. Okay. So all accessories are definitely going more edgier. You'll also see that in your clothing. Um, this is a perfect example of that. This Vince Camuto flat has the detail, the little nail head studs on the back. It's a great look for um, Love fall. That. Love the detail But look that. great back with Dale's um, black and blue combo uh -huh. outfit. Black and blue is two colors that are you're going to see lots of for fall yeah. paired together. That's good. Um, and here is my jewelry. It's yes. Sadie um, handcrafted jewelry that I design and I've been doing this since 2005 and uh, this necklace oh, that's well, awesome go well, ahead that's yeah. a good amber but um, this necklace another print and style that you'll see a lot of is Aztec um, kind of the tribal inspired and okay. this necklace is a good example of that that um, kind of tribal inspired love that now, if someone's watching today and they see something that they like, let's say, for example, the jewelry, they can go to your website. What is your website? It is mysadiejewelry.com. And so they can go there and kind of peruse and check it out and look at some of the other pieces that you have there. They can definitely, but also we have it at Reed's um, and you can uh, call us at 662-842-6453 and we would love to ship anything to you. And they can also find you guys on Facebook, Dale. Is that right? That's they right. can just look up Reads on Facebook and they'll find you right there and be able to contact you guys exactly. that way. Now, I know, Dale, we're about to go to break here, but I know that you have some other pieces that you wanted to show that you could kind of change some of these things right. out really quick. Do you want to bring those over and just sure. maybe show some of the other colors sure. that you guys have? Um, yes. I just wanted to show that um, with a simple change in wardrobe, you can take this wonderful white silk shirt and add this accordion pleat skirt, which everybody loves. People are doing these in long and short styles. Mm -hmm. um, great look. You can take your colored jeans, make it a little bit more serious with this long cardi. This is a houndstooth. I love that, yeah. Easy cardigan. It can also work with the black. We have a fun poncho with this teal color, and it is fabulous. I love I that. I thought you would love that. Oh, that's so cute. And so our, our viewers can check you guys out on exactly. Facebook. And they can always give you a call in-store. The number's right on your screen. You can find out more information there. And when we come back, we're, we're done talking about fashion. We're going to turn to a more serious topic. We're going to talk about the changing trends among young Christians right here in America. Make sure you don't go anywhere. Lisa Anderson of Focus on the Family joins us via Skype. That's up next. You know, there's a girl watching right now and she says, I am in love with this man and I am committed to him in my heart. Why do I need a piece of paper or a minister to say that we're one, we are one? But you know, for, for a while I, I looked around and I saw other women um, in the homeschooling community who really felt that, you know, a woman's place was at home and that um, serving her family and her children in the house and um, being a helpmeet to the husband and um, I started to develop this opinion of what a woman's role is that was very limiting.